this bill 2023 uh, be read a second time. Mr. Speaker, this bill is not uh, foreign to the Senate and not foreign to senators. This is a fourth attempt by Parliament to have a legislative framework that gives effect to Article 188 of the Constitution. Article 188 of the Constitution talks about alteration of county boundaries. Mr. Speaker, this bill had previously been brought to this House under the sponsorship of Senator Mutula Kilonzo, and uh, there have been about three attempts. There have been all sorts of arguments against the approach that we had taken in the past. At some point, the National Assembly vetoed it, saying that it was a money bill, that it was proposing a charge on the consolidated fund. And the latest uh, attempt, uh, this bill died due to lack of concurrence between the speakers of both houses. But this is a very important legislation. The team that was in BOMAS, the National Dialogue Committee, flagged the issue of county boundaries as one of the key issues around cohesion that needed to be dealt with. And I took note that we asked the National Dialogue Committee made certain legislative proposals for the other pieces of laws that they uh, felt should be enacted. When it came to the County Boundaries Bill, the National Dialogue Committee proposed that the bill that is currently before Parliament should be fast-tracked. And I, I do hope, uh, Mr. Speaker, that this time, this bill is going to get uh, bipartisan support and bicameral support. The objective of this bill is to give effect to Article 188 of the Constitution. Mr. Speaker, the territory of Kenya is defined in Article 6 as comprising of the 47 counties that have been listed in the first schedule of the Constitution. The question has been, why do we have 47 counties and not 13 or not fewer, like Senator Kalwale has uh, been reported as saying that we need fewer counties. Why do we have 47 counties? Uh, Mr. Speaker, when the team that was drafting the new constitution retreated in Ivasha, there was a rush to have a constitution that would be acceptable to all Kenyans. Initially, there was a formation that was in favor of uh, counties along the lines of the existing provinces. There was a middle ground that was considering 13 counties, but then the team that carried the day is a team that convinced the committee meeting in Ivasha that we adopt the 46 districts plus Nairobi as captured in the Districts and Provinces Act of 1992. Mr. Speaker, if you ask me what the science was or what the logic was, uh, some of the people who are in Naivasha, I think some of them are here. Uh, Senator Mugatana was in the House around that time. I hope we'll benefit from their wisdom so that they can tell us uh, what science uh, there was. Senator Boni Halwale uh, was, was around and, and was very much involved in that process. So there was no magic. We just said, okay, let's take the Districts and Provinces Act of 1992. Mr. Speaker, in 1992, Kitui had just been split and Kitui had uh, gotten a new district. But that new district had not been gazetted as at the time people were in Naivasha. And so that is why the Senator for Kitui still feels that we should have a 48th county uh, along the lines of the districts that were there then. So that's the reason why we have 47 counties. Are they economically viable? That's a completely different question. Are the boundaries natural or they are man-made or uh, they've been gerrymandered to uh, take into account certain clan or tribal uh, issues? I guess that's still up for discussion. Where do counties begin and end? That is another vexing question. Just last week, Nyamira and Kisi, otherwise very good neighbors. They speak the same language, they have the same history. Nyamira and Kisi, people are fighting over a market in Keroka. And you ask yourself, so what does this market have to do to challenge age-old cultural ties, people who speak the same language from the same clans? And uh, if we are not careful, we are going to lose lives. In Vihiga, between Vihiga and Kisumu, there's a big fight about Maseno. And there is no session that we have held where we have not had a petitioner from, uh, from Vihiga. In fact, it keeps the Devolution Committee and the Lands Committee very busy. Issues to do with Vihiga. Makweni and Taita Taveta. Uh, Makweni and Taita Taveta are fighting over, I think there's a center 
there's a center called Mtituandei. And it's driven by concerns around revenue. The governor, Makweni, wants to collect revenue in Mtituandei. The people of Taita Taveta are saying that is historically uh, their, their city, their town. Kericho Kisubu. Kericho Kisumu, uh, Mr. Speaker, sometimes I, 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 I fail to understand why we neighbors sometimes have to fight over issues of boundary. And yet, these are communities that have known each other even before they knew the white man. The people who live in Kisumu and the people who live in Kericho, uh, most of them are generally Luos and members of the Kalenjin community. We knew each other before we knew the colonialists. But then issues of boundaries separate us. Isiolo and Meru, there have been issues. And it is on record that there are about 40 petitions with regards to county boundaries. Some of those petitions have come before the Senate, others have gone to the National Lands Commission, and others have found their way in court. So where counties end and begin is not captured in the Constitution. The Constitution only lists the 47 counties. But that description of where counties start and end is captured in the District and Provinces Act of 1992. And Mr. Speaker, the language used in the District and Provinces Act, Senator Mugatana will tell you, uh, leaves a lot to be des desired because it is, some, some language is not very accurate. Some of it is very descriptive. Some of it refers to natural features, which, because of climate change, they might not be there anymore. Some of it refers to rivers and streams. So it is important that we ensure that we concretize these issues to avoid uh, the conflicts that we've seen around the counties. It might also be useful for senators to note that whereas in 1992 we had 46 plus one districts, plus one meaning Nairobi, between 1992 and 2002, President Moi had created 30 additional districts. And so by the time people were going to Naivasha to consider the new constitution, there were close to 77 districts. And so people had to roll back to 1992 as a better benchmark. How do you resolve these disputes across boundaries? And we have tried, Mr. Speaker, when I chaired the devolution committee, the matter of uh, Vihiga and uh, Kisumu came before my committee. And unfortunately, we responded to the petitioners that the Senate shall enact legislation to give effect to Article 188. And uh, Senate sounded fairly helpless because you are not giving the petitioners a solution. You are giving them a promise. The only other alternative would have been for them to go to court, and the courts would still bring them back to the Senate because the courts cannot write laws. This bill, in attempting to provide a framework for dealing with boundary disputes, establishes the County Boundaries Mediation Committee as a first instance for dealing with boundary disputes. The County Boundaries Mediation Committee is an ad hoc committee. So it's not going to be a permanent thing that is there forever. And uh, this County Boundaries Mediation Committee acts upon resolution of the Senate. So it has to be moved by the Senate. It is appointed by the President. And its composition, uh, it comprises of uh, officers of the national government, officers from counties government. And I saw during public participation there was need to include the National Cohesion and Integration Commission as part of the, of, of the County Boundaries Mediation Committee. And I think that is an amendment that uh, I find very reasonable, and uh, we probably need to have the NCIC being part of this. So other members are from the National Lands Commission, a representative from surveyors, um, and, uh, and, and a representative from the Council of Gov Governors, and I think we can include the NC. I see. So clause five of this bill is very clear on how a request to, to Senate uh, should be shaped, how a request to Senate should be submitted for the establishment of a county boundaries mediation committee. Now that county boundaries mediation committee can have various proposals. It can propose that the boundaries be altered. Now, if the Boundaries Mediation Committee proposes that the boundaries be altered, then we go to Article 188 of the Constitution. Mr. Speaker, Article 188 talks of instances or 
reasons that could uh, lead to alteration of county boundaries. Now, an interesting reading of Article 188 is that it sounds like once those conditions have been fulfilled, and once a commission has been established by the president, and once the commission reports that a boundary should be altered, then that alteration takes effect. And I've been looking at Article 188 and comparing with Article 255 that says that anything that affects the structure of devolved governments is subject to a referendum. But Article 188 sounds very final. And Mr. Speaker, these are some of the areas that we need to look into because Article 188 from a plain reading means that you can alter county boundaries without necessarily going into a referendum.